you life with tea and i'm back with another vlog i have been missing in action for a while i know i had to take a mental health break and also excuse my daughter in the background because she is doing her own thing um i came to talk to you my viewers about some topics that i keep seeing floating around the nursing community um at work on tiktok and it's just a repeat occurrence of the same thing happening over and over again so i want to come talk about some topics and give my viewpoint on the matter since i do work in healthcare and as well as i am a new grad nurse and not a lot of people talk about these subjects and so I just want to give full transparency that nowhere, um, nowhere am I downplaying. Stop it, Bailey. If you guys didn't know, I got a new dog as well, so I will show you photos of her at a later date. But, um, <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all. I had to just pause really quick because I have background extra background noise but as I was saying I am giving 100% full transparency about my thoughts on the matter so if I look down it's because I'm looking at my notepad so the first topic that I'm going to address is the toxic culture in nursing more so starting with what is going on in nursing school and how it all starts from school wise into the real world because I can be 100% honest, nursing is not all flowers and happy things. There are some people who it's just hard to work with and some people just, they aren't the nicest, I can say, but it all really does start in nursing school and I myself have experienced this in nursing school myself so that's why i feel comfortable with talking about it so the first topic will be professors bullying their students quick story time i have experienced this myself i'm not giving out any names no school no nothing but i just want to reflect on my experience as a whole since i'm done technically and um yeah so let's get started so professors bullying students is a recurrent thing and I keep hearing about it and it's becoming more commonly talked about. It more so has to do with a lot of these professors are older and they think with the mentality that nurses eat their young and that is the most toxic mindset to have simply because we are fresh inside of healthcare and we are not signing up to be bullied and to be scared into thinking that nursing is not for us. It does take some thick skin to be a nurse, I can say, because your patients, for one, not everybody is alert and oriented at times for, they aren't pleasant, they're sick, they're stressed out, and they might say some things that they don't mean all because they're in pain, they're uncomfortable, they're scared. And things like that so you really have to have some thick skin and to navigate your emotions for the full 12 hours to perform your job um safely and without a shadow of a doubt now i'm not saying that verbal abuse is okay i'm saying that in the real world it's not perfect you're gonna have psych patients older adults with dementia um people with personality issues um schizophrenia and like um like a lot of different things so it is important to know how to um properly take care of and how to deal with patients who can be difficult and are like um i don't know how to word it who are sort of kind of difficult 
to take care of. So with professors bullying students, um, I was in third semester, I believe. Yeah, it was third semester because it was not fourth. I had this professor and I can say that the majority of the tension came from her being an older nurse and as we all know that nursing research updates almost every year if not more frequently than that but as long as I know it's every year because our textbooks are like updated almost yearly with some manufacturers and when she would be teaching she would speak on an experience that would more so not be inside of our textbook and when she used to teach us it was not more so evidence-based practice and as we all know nursing school is all by the book and evidence-based practice and if it's not then you're more so going to get the answer wrong on a school exam real life is real life that's completely different but in nursing school everything is completely by the book and that's it there is no real word there's a real word that they're just preparing you on how to take the NCLEX and in my opinion nursing school does not prepare you for the real world so with that being said she would mostly take offense if somebody were to correct her and point out that that's not evidence-based practice so I have this habit where if you are going to teach the class you are going to um <laughs> you're going to teach it right not saying I was telling her how to teach her class but I was more so letting her know that hey this is what it says in the book this is what we're going to be testing on like so can you please stick to this because I'm not paying for stories like I'm not I'm not paying for your stories I'm here to learn I'm here to get my education and go so when I would question her about some of the things that she she said or find discrepancies in her teaching and or she used to quiz us using I think the med search success book or test um our actual test book and things like that and she will find quizzes off of Quizlet to test us on which also had a lot of discrepancies where it, it was a mess it was literally that semester was a mess so when I used to highlight and come to her with the correct answer not in a malicious way or nothing like that she would like I could see it in her face and her whole demeanor would change basically how I'm questioning her education I'm just like well it says this in the book this is what's current this is what we're supposed to be learning and I could just see the disdain in her face and she would more so make a slick remark as to why I'm questioning her and it got to a point where it was towards the end of the semester like this happened on repeated occurrences I'm not the type honestly I'm not the type to hang my head and just not say anything because what you're not gonna do you're not gonna bully me I've been <laughs> bullied enough in my life in my younger life to know that that is unacceptable and unprofessional to say the least and it got to a point where um towards the end of the semester where I was in class one day and I'm not saying I was right in this situation but in college you are surrounded by grown adults I was one of the I think younger ones in the class I am 23 if anyone is wondering and um I don't bother anybody I sit in front of the class I do my own thing no like anyone who knows me I don't I don't really bother anybody so I was sitting in front of the class one day and I was doing my pediatric notes and um I had an upcoming exam I think all together combined the slides are like 300 and some slides combined it was a lot I think it was either our third exam or we did have a third exam so it had to be our final and I was putting together our notes for the final because I needed to pass because I didn't have a bag or in the class but I just needed to pass and she walked like I don't understand why folks think it's okay to just be all up in each other's personal devices because I was on my own computer so I was on my computer I was finishing my notes and she would walk past and just literally have her eyes dead set on my screen and I'm just sitting here looking like lady you're supposed to be 
teaching whatever you're teaching. Like she wasn't even actually teaching. We were doing an assignment and she wasn't on our group yet. So I was confused as to why she was so concerned with what I was doing in the first place. So she would just walk past and be all up in my computer and she would make little shout outs in the class like, oh, like, so if you're doing this, it's not allowed in my class and so forth and so on. So this is the first time I was hearing about this because I was confused. I'm just like, you, like, none of this is in your syllabus. Like, you just making stuff up as you go. So she kept on slick shots, like, I would say like four or five times during the class. So I was just like, all right, I know she's. She's talking about me, but I'm not bothering anybody, so I'm gonna just keep doing what I'm doing. Again, she's not on our group yet, so we had nothing, nothing to really do but just sit there. So, again, so the fourth and final time is here's the kicker. I was sitting there finishing up my notes, and I had my notebook sort of kind of laying on my computer because I was looking at that and typing. Remind you, I have a MacBook Pro 15 inch, so it was sort of kind of snazzy. And so, as I'm typing, this lady comes up and she shuts my computer and she's like really close to my face. And she states, I kid you not, if you don't want to be in my class, you don't have to be in my class. And you can go sit in that person's class and finish your notes. The whole class was silent because they know me and they know I don't put up with stuff like that I had to choose between my career and a internal response because I'm not even gonna lie to you I can sometimes have a quick temper when I'm tried but I have come to learn that she wanted a reaction out of me and that I was not going to give her the benefit of that with that reaction because it was either a react how I wanted to and not have been sitting in jail on a battery charge or b do the professional thing get my books and walked out and I was like, okay, let me reevaluate my choices. And that's what I did. I had to sit there for like a quick second and think what I wanted him because that was unprofessional for one. And two, she shouldn't have got in my face. And three, she should, she should have put her hands on my personal property. Because if you had a problem, you could have pulled me aside after class and said what you had to say professionally. You do not have to put me out in class and draw attention like that. If you get what I'm saying. Like I saw her point. I probably shouldn't have been doing notes to her class. But it's the end of the semester. Like we are preparing for exams. Like we really didn't have anything to learn. But we just kept coming to class for attendance purposes. So after that I had to contact the higher ups. If to my nursing students. If you feel like a professor is bullying you. Picking on you and things like that. You should really like. The old saying to my just hang your head and not say nothing, no, that is the most toxic, punitive thing that you can do. You are not paying to be bullied. You are paying to be taught how to be a nurse and how to move forth in your career. Nobody should be set up to be bullied, picked on, is that a third? Because I can tell you, some of these nurses out here will try it. And you have all the right in the world to put them in their place. Nobody is walking into a profession was like oh pick me and bully me to that no so with that being said I had to contact the higher-ups and they handled it and by the following week she was not employed there anymore I don't know if she resigned she got fired I don't know that's not my business but I do know what she did was unprofessional she had a room my $2,500 laptop somebody would have been paying for it because when she shut my computer she shut it on top of my notebook and actually was like leaning on it so she could have cracked my screen and everybody knows what macbook products it could have cracked so um after that we got a new professor and she wasn't really the best either but we got through the semester on a smooth note so um moving forward after that i didn't have any more issues i am now done with nursing school and um like i was saying before to reiterate do not think just because you are in nursing school you are to take whatever's thrown at you and to deal with the excuse my French here bull spit that a lot of these professors especially the older ones throw at you it's not it's not right whatever they grew up with is not your problem like the whole projecting trauma thing is really common so what to do in a situation like I said in nursing school you have a 
vice president and a president of uh, and a president of um academic affairs but there are people you can speak to it's a chain of command it's like the dean the assistant dean um the director you have a president vice president of student affairs stuff like that so it is nothing like they are there for that reason and don't think because they are there like just to not say anything to avoid conflict no like that's unprofessional to say the least and a professor who's supposed to be there to teach should make their students feel bullied and inadequate it's just no that's not right so second topic well technically the third because i just addressed two things at once are doctors who are rude everybody who is in the healthcare profession can vouch for this that some mds physician assistants and people who are who went to medical school can be rude especially like i said before the older residents and physicians and things like that i've had situations where doctors would literally scream and cuss at nurses thinking that we are the bottom of the gum on their shoe and i'm here to say that professionally if you do experience that in my opinion they will get hung up on if it's uh through the phone you not from the sit up here and talk to me like that yes i'm calling you at three in the morning and healthcare is 24 7. if you don't want to deal with the situation you shouldn't have been in healthcare in the first place I don't like calling people when they're asleep, but you're on call. And it's my job to advocate for my patients. So it is what it is. So if you don't like it, oh well. So with that being said, if you come across a situation to where um, a doctor or a coworker or anybody is rude, you just shut down the conversation with saying, yo, like we can um, communicate better when you are in a better mood and just leave it at that for the health and safety of the patient it is okay to consult your charge nurse as well on what to do about the situation because i would just hang up on them and be like nothing has been done but i would say chart the incident and just go from there like it's a also a chain of command in a hospital as well but there are some rude mds out there as well and the there are professional responses you can give them. I can't think of any off the top of my head because I'm dog tired, but it is more so do what's in the best interest of your patient. And um yeah. Um the best thing you can do is follow up in like a timely manner. If you have the call back, then do so and be like our previous encounter was not positive, but hey, like this is what's going on. But don't just not say anything and take the bullying and abuse. It's not it's not okay. As I said, it's a chain of command of who you can talk to if that is to happen. Physicians and doctors also have bosses because the hospital employed them. So somebody is also above them. With that being said, next topic. Nurses who eat their young. As I said before, that's not okay. It is toxic. It is it should be stopped, especially with this new age of nursing. They're, like Folks are wondering why there's a shortage because a lot of these nurses, and this goes into my next topic of nurses who don't want students. There are a lot of nurses out there who are not good teachers. And that's part of the reason why they don't want students because they work, they work better by themselves. Like me personally, I work better. Like, well, it also depends, but I work better alone, but that's not to say that I'm not a person who can't teach. It's just my way of learning how I learn. That's just how I am. But a lot of these nurses who forgot that they were also once students and had to learn some way, just are nasty and attitudinal about having a student. I have literally seen, well, also I had an encounter with a nurse. She was on... I think a floor for diabetics. I was at clinical one day and she just blatantly kept walking past me at like I didn't exist. And she already knew I was assigned to her, but she just kept walking past me, 
she, she would walk off and on purpose and get lost and I would try and find her and she would she would have already passed the med or did something and not told me like it was a mess so in that situation if you have a nurse who is at like they don't want you around please go to your instructor and get reassigned and let them know what happened because if not you are going to have a miserable 12 hour experience so with that being said um you can also speak up for yourself in that situation and be like hey if you don't want a student just let me know and i would happily get out of your way like it's not one to just put your head out and follow someone around like a lost puppy don't do that so for these nurses who forget that they were once in the student's shoes, be nice about it because we all have to learn somewhere and your attitude towards nursing students, no, we're not gonna do that. And with that being said, like I said, speak up, speak up for yourself. If you are going to be in a profession where you yourself have to speak up for your patients, you can also speak up for yourself. And do what's best for you and your career because if you don't say anything it's going to continue and they think that behavior is okay so to nip it in the bud they also have bosses and you also have an instructor who will speak up for you because i had to go to mine and she walked up to the nurse and asked her do you have a problem and do you have a problem with my student because if so i can happily reassign her the nurse her whole attitude switched it was like no i want a student i want a student all right cool so We'll go to my next point, incompetent nurses. I've experienced, I, I have also seen some nurses where they are not competent. And surprisingly, this one nurse, I know she was a traveler. Not saying my travelers are bad, I love my travelers. Y'all are the bomb.com. It was just this one I've ever seen a problem with. She was lazy. She would have six patients for a whole 12-hour shift. Night shift would come on and since I work night shift, I would see it firsthand. She wouldn't do anything. She would chart really late. Um, a lot of the tasks in her task list were not done. And she would pass off a lot, if not her whole task list, to the following shift. And we're like, in a whole 12 hours, five out of your six patients have nothing done. Had this one situation where a patient was over blood pressure medications. He was like, he ain't seen his nurse in the whole 12 hours. And we're just like, are you serious? And we go look in the mar, none of his meds were ever passed. So he was telling the truth. So in that case, and we all know with blood pressure meds, you need those because if not, you could stroke out. And we don't want that to happen. Blood pressure's being a two hundreds and so forth and so on. So we went to management about it. Well, it wasn't we, a nurse did because as we all know, I'm a PCT, so I had to sit back and watch it unfold. But something was done about it. She advocated for her patient because that could be dangerous. And she charted it like she just pushed it off. Well, like, some of, some people have no time management skills. And I've heard that nurse would just sit in the bathroom and play on her phone. Like, you he didn't hear it from me. But uh, she was just incompetent and since she was agency like rules kind of different for people in agency because you're supposed to contact their agency about it but that's another story for a different day um and the last topic i'm going to address is legal ramifications to malpractice as we all know nurses have a certain scope and we are to abide by that scope and if not it is automatically malpractice if we are doing something that we have not learned in nursing school again consult your facilities policies and procedures because if you do something outside of your scope and it harms that patient the, the courts ain't trying to hear it if there were steps that could have been taken to prevent the patient from getting hurt and yeah you did it anyway and if it was done and it was charted and things like that it will be took to court if the family decides to sue and so forth and so on so, like I said, like in big bold letters, highlighted policies and procedures of your facility because everything is not the same for every facility. Like, I can't stress this enough. Please, if you do not know something, ask one of your seasoned co-workers, ask a manager, policies and procedures, like anything before you do anything to that patient if you really do not know. Because nobody is trying to, well, I didn't know. You didn't know. Well, you have a license now. You should have knew. There are some some judges who 
will assess situation like okay she's new like is that a third first incident all right cool but if you have a history because if you get fired from a hospital like it shows up on your nursing record things like that it depends on the reason why you got fired but there are um legal holes and everything else that's like a different story for a different day but there are legal ramifications to if you do harm a patient and with that being said like i said ask questions you can't never ask enough questions once it comes to somebody's life you are now hold a license to where you are responsible for every patient that you come across and with that being said like just ask any question you have i ain't gonna say google it because google ain't always correct but just please ask questions if you are a baby nurse and you have questions please ask questions you can never not ask enough questions when it comes to somebody's family member's life imagine if that was your family member in that bed you would want the person taking care of your family member to ask questions if they didn't know so also forth and someone to say that the culture around nursing is becoming toxic and it is getting worse and everybody that is not a nursing shortage the honest and god truth there are nurses everywhere there are literally nurses everywhere the people who are passing the grocery store a lot of them are doctors and nurses and you don't even know there is not a shortage on nurses it's just a shortage of nursing at bedside people are leaving bedside because it has become toxic these hospitals don't want to pay nobody and it has gotten to a point where folks are going agency rethinking their careers and everything i'm sorry y'all my camera shut off but um folks are literally leaving bedside because of the reasons i listed like it's getting bad unsafe staffing ratios um staff members just rude and nasty um then physical abuse from the patients the family members because trust me cold gray is happening i think the universal color for physical um altercations is a cold gray these family members and these patients will happily assault healthcare workers and like the staff parties these hospitals will not do anything about it management will probably ask well what could have been done to avoid this situation well the patient could have anything wrong with them the family could also physically assault healthcare workers and if anything if it boils on to going to court they're gonna see us as well did you swing back did you hit them back like it's a lot of yeah it's a lot of problems with that scenario but all in all i can honestly say choose your profession wisely and know what you're walking into make sure you ask these recruiters and nurse managers questions what are your staffing ratios how does that hospital protect their nurses and stuff like that and i'll also do a video on nursing interview questions to ask your recruiter because it has gotten out of hand and us being new we are not asking the appropriate questions because you also got to gauge who is interviewing you to get the answers that you need to see if that facility is right for you because you can also tell when someone is lying in the interview so just do what you got to do and do thorough research do a shadow whatever you got to do ask your recruiter if it's possible to shadow the unit and go from there so with that being said, um, if anybody has any questions that you want me to talk about, just comment down below and so forth and so on. And I will do my best to happily answer any question that I personally experience. If I haven't experienced, I will verbalize that. But yeah, um, so from this point on, is nothing but the truth and honest to the truth. And we can only go up from here. So... I will talk to you guys in another video about the topics that you want me to address and see you later.